towns that I am from. No, no, it's not like that. This is a, a small little town. You know, it's it's near a national park and stuff like that. So gotcha. it's kind of right on the edge of that. But there's a stream nearby. There's mountains in the distance. And there's a lot of windows where you can see all this. This It's desert beauty, but it's also desert with the stream and then the mountains. I was going to ask. I'm like, desert and a stream. Interesting. Yeah. Don't see that too often. It's Utah. So and Utah is notorious for being like desert a strange. beautiful place that's kind of otherworldly compared to the rest of the United States. Mm. And part of it is the desert and stuff like that there. Yeah, I recall. So she takes her dog, you know, stops by the store, buys supplies, gets up to the house, and it's just, this is amazing. Like, yeah. if she could afford it, you know, she would buy it. But she also, she wouldn't have a job in that area because there's not much going on. Yeah. And also, I'm guessing there was another interested buyer, and he went by the name of Bigfoot. Yes, but he wanted a much lower price. Mm. So so she's staying there, and she's like, why can't, can't they sell it? Because somebody that would want to retire away from everything would buy it, and... It's expensive to her, but not expensive to rich people that would do that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, do they say the, the price of the house at all? I think it was 495000 which really isn't that much, but I don't know how long ago it hey, was. Inflation, a couple of years, our house will be worth that probably. Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's hard to tell hmm. when it was, but it was outside of her price range. If I remember right, she was a nerd. Oh, nice. So, I mean, make a good make living, good but not rich. Hmm. Yeah, so, so she gets there. Gets settled in, takes her dog for a walk. Dog kind of act, acts weird at certain times. And she was all excited, too, because she's in the desert. She brought her camera. She was going to do night photography. Sure. So she starts setting up for that. And on one of the times, she's focusing up at the sky, but she looks out, and she sees, like, two red eyes. And she thought it was a buffalo because there's some wild buffalo in the area. But then she remembered back to another trip she'd made to another national park where the rangers saying. If you see the two eyes facing forward, that's a predator, and you might want to run. And she's like, well, buffaloes don't have two eyes on their, you know, facing forward. They're on their prey, so they're, they got the eyes on the side of their head to keep, keep an eye out for predators. Mm -hmm. So she's a little freaked out and kind of feels uncomfortable, like we always hear in Bigfoot stories, and, and the that, dog's kind of acting weird. And you probably would feel uncomfortable if you saw two red eyes staring at you. Yeah. But as, being that it's similar to like our typical horror movies, mm. person's like, oh, well, it's, I'm, I'm, sure it's I'm fine. scared. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to go to sleep. Next day, she's out walking the dog and she comes up on this thing that she thought is another like a dog or something. It's basically dead, though. Mm. <laughs> and up comes this guy on a horse, a local rancher. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like you belong in these parts. That's pretty much what he was. He's like, yeah, yeah, this used to be a really good area, but now there's a lot of tourists coming in. Yeah. And she was like, kind of felt like, is he talking about me? I'm not kind of a tourist, of, but not really. Of course he's talking about you. And she mentioned that she'd seen this dead animal. And he's like, will you show it to me? And he, Weird. Be, because she found footprints around it. She's like, why is somebody out walking around this carcass with bare feet in mm -hmm. the desert? Not really putting two and two together. Plus, it's the desert. Who thinks that there's a Bigfoot? I mean, there is trees and forests not too far around. Yeah. But you're in, when you're in the desert, you don't normally think you're going to see a Bigfoot. It could be a Sand Yeti. Yeah. Good name. I like sand that Yeti. name. Sand Yeti. Yeah. We should uh, it's copyright it now. Yeah, make a shirt. Anyone that sees a Sand Yeti, it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I own it. He belongs to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so he, like, they walk up to the carcass, and he gets all weird. He's like, you probably shouldn't go out after night. Or after dark. Mm. She's like, what? And, you know, he kind of like, kind of quiet, not trusting. And he'd already made the tourist comment, but he was nice to her. And she's like, okay, whatever. They leave. And she goes back a little bit weird. And she's like, you ain't going to tell me how to live my life, bitch. Yeah. And she goes out after dark, right? Yeah. Classic. But one of the funny things was, too, when she found this animal, she was keeping an eye on her dog because she's like, dogs will roll in anything stinky. Which is totally true. They will roll in anything stinky. It's how they cover up their scent. So it's like an instinctive thing. It's an instinctive thing. Yeah. I like that. True. True. So she, you know, she's doing her thing, goes back to the house. Mm -hmm. um, it's just feeling kind of weird. Nothing major, though. Nothing, nothing to get her, you know, hackles up. Her Spe hackles up? Yeah. Speaking, since we were just talking about her puppy. Mm. Nothing to necessarily get her dogs.